what a tricky balance of safety and risk it is that brings out the best in us. Kaya McLaren. Empowerment in education, two powerful elements that will help you break free of convention and transform your passion for wellness to a level beyond the status quo. The Essential Oil Revolution, where you're given the tools to supersede an ordinary everyday lifestyle. Inspiring speakers, DIY recipes, healthy living tips, and more. You'll discover it all here. So tune in and get ready for a wellness revolution. For show notes and more, go to revolutionoils.com slash podcast. Hey there, revolutionaries. My name is Samantha Lee Wright. I am a mom of two, a childbirth educator and doula, and an avid lover of all things essential oils, healthy living, and self-reliance. In the previous episode, we talked about the what, the why, and the mission behind this podcast show. And for today's episode, what we're going to do is basically lay the foundation for almost every episode that's going to follow today's episode because we talk a lot about essential oils and the different reasons and the different ways that you can use them to live a healthier, more radiant lifestyle. And I didn't want every episode for me to have to stop and remind everyone of the basics, how to apply, how to use them, and the safety. So I want to just put everyone on the same page regarding how to use essential oils and how to use them safely. The reason I picked that Kaya McLaren quote for today's episode is that there's a lot of misinformation out there regarding the safety of essential oils and how we use them. And it's really stopping a lot of people from using these gifts of nature, using these essential oils to really better their lives. Uh, And I think it's kind of sad. So hopefully in this episode, what we're going to do is break down a lot of the myths and the misconceptions regarding essential oil safety. But what we're really going to focus on in this episode is just the very basics of how to use your essential oils. I'm going to give the basic three ways to apply or use your essential oils, and then just the general safety information that everyone needs to know about before they start using essential oils. So if you already know how to use your oils, you've been using them for a while, you could probably just skip ahead um, to the next episode. But if you're new or you need a little recap, this episode is for you. So here we go, revolutionaries. I'm going to try to do something a little bit crazy for this episode. I'm going to attempt to cram everything you need to know about using essential oils into this one roughly 20-minute episode. So let's get right to it. All right. So what are essential oils? Well, I like to explain essential oils are basically just the concentrated collection of a certain plant material. I think we're all familiar with using herbs and spices for teas and tinctures uh, and other herbal uses. Well, using essential oils is really no different, except that they're much more potent, much more concentrated, and much more effective in a lot of ways. When we collect herbs and spices and we dry them for uses for tea and cooking and whatnot, we're actually losing about 96 to 98% of the essential oil that's in that plant, which is really where the magic lies. So when we collect the oil from the plant by doing a low steam distillation, we're actually capturing the complete chemical profile of that plant. We're not really losing anything when we do that. And what this does is it it creates a very concentrated, a very potent form of that plant material. So for example, a peppermint essential oil is said that one drop of peppermint essential oil from a good quality company like Young Living is equal to roughly 26 cups of peppermint tea. So we want to be aware of how potent and concentrated these essential oils are because we don't want to overuse them. Not only is it possibly taxing on your body and a waste of money, but it's also disrespectful towards the earth and the plants that are being harvested for the essential oil use. So in my opinion, I think it's extremely important that we support 
good farming practices when it comes to collecting our essential oils. A lot of companies will spray their plants with a lot of toxins. They really have no vision for long-term sustainability of their plants. It's something that really drew me to Young Living because they have just extremely great beyond organic farming practices and they're completely committed to the sustainability of those plant species. So I feel like I'm actually contributing to something like a really good thing when I support a farming practice such as Young Living. So how do you use essential oils? Well, there are three different ways you can apply your oils. So get ready, get your notebooks out, take note. The first way is aromatically. Smelling essential oils is one of the only methods that can actually reach the limbic system of your brain, which is where the emotions lie in our body. So the limbic system, it's where all of our emotions come from. It's what makes us happy. It's what makes us sad. It's, it's how we connect smells to memories. And smells can have such a powerful impact on that part of our brain. And so inhaling essential oils directly through that limbic system can be a really powerful way to enhance our emotional lives. It can help us calm down when we've had a rough day. It can help us feel happy when we're kind of in a funk. makes us feel sleepy sometimes if we're having a, a hard time falling asleep. Something about inhaling the essential oils and smelling them and reaching that that olfactory system is a really powerful way to enhance your life. And, and it's really fun too. It's just so much fun to fill your house up with this, this intoxicating smell. And it's almost like mind control. I tell my children when I when they're bouncing off the walls and I say, all right, I'm about to put some peace and calming on in the diffuser. And they know that means that everything's just going to slow down a little bit. You can smell essential oils directly from the bottle if you'd like, but what I really like to do is just put like one or two drops in the palm of my hand and then cup that over my mouth and my nose and take 10 deep breaths in. Oh, and just really breathe in that oil. Um, I especially love to do this with peppermint oil. It just, ooh, it just wakes you up, really gets you going, really clears your, your sinuses out and just feels great, smells amazing. So I recommend trying that. So you can do it that way. You can smell it right out of the bottle or you can use what's called a diffuser. So you can put your oil into a diffuser. It's like a little machine that you plug in. You usually fill it with a little bit of water and then add a couple drops of essential oil. And this just fills the entire room up with this lovely, beautiful aroma. When you're shopping for a diffuser, you want to be sure it uses what's called ultrasonic technology. And it's designed to be used with essential oils. So a regular humidifier will not work. You don't want to use anything that uses heat to dispense the oils because this could degrade the therapeutic benefit of the oils. All right, the second way we can use our essential oils is topically, or in other words, putting them on your skin. Now, we do this, it's generally recommended that you dilute your essential oils down with what's called a carrier oil. So a carrier oil is just any fatty-based oil such as coconut oil, olive oil, jojoba, grapeseed, you know, really any sort of vegetable oil would do whatever you've got in your kitchen. It doesn't really matter so much what kind of carrier oil you use, although some will leave you feeling more greasy than others. So I really love coconut oil is probably one of my favorites, um, and I really love Young Living's carrier oil blend called V6. It just like absorbs right into the skin. It's heavenly, but um, just use what you've got around. Some of the oils you can apply directly to the skin or as the cool kids call it, you can apply it neat, N-E-A-T, just like when you order bourbon, um, neat, you know, no ice, no water, just means undiluted. So certain oils such as lavender, frankincense, or tea tree, they're very mild, very gentle on the skin, and most people can handle applying these oils neat to the skin. Just honor your body and what it needs. You know, if you put an oil on and your skin seems irritated, 
just increase the amount of carrier oil that you're using. Generally, I recommend that you just always use a carrier oil. I think that it tends to absorb into the skin a little bit better. It tends to enhance the properties of that essential oil. But for convenience sake, if you know your skin, you know that it's able to absorb the essential oil without any irritation, not using a carrier oil, that's fine too. Now, there's different suggestions floating around regarding the proper essential oil to carrier oil ratio. I think that that these can be a good place to start, but in the end, you just need to listen to your body and know what's right for you. Your body might need more carrier oil or you could be fine with less. So a general rule of thumb for adults is use one teaspoon of carrier oil to every two to six drops of essential oil. For babies up to uh, five-year-olds, one tablespoon of carrier oil for every one to three drops of essential oils. And for kids five to 10 years of age, one tablespoon of carrier oil for every three to six drops of essential oil. So that's just a good place to start. Again, tune in, know what your body needs. You might need more, you might need less. If you're, if you're feeling irritated on your skin at all, increase the carrier oil, no big deal. Now, my favorite place to apply my essential oils is usually either on the bottom of my feet or on my spine. Those two places seem to be really great for assimilating the oils throughout the entire body. But it really just depends on what system of the body you're trying to support. So, you know, if I'm trying to support my digestive system, I'll probably just rub a few drops right on my belly. I tend to start my day off by rubbing just a few drops of lemon oil right over where my my liver is to give my liver that extra support. You know, I like to rub peppermint and wintergreen on my knees and my muscles before or after a workout. So you can really apply these oils just about anywhere and you'll learn in time where you apply different ones to benefit you and what you need. But if you're not sure where to put an oil, start with just the bottom of your feet. The only places you never want to apply essential oils is in your eyes or directly in your ear canal. Okay, if you accidentally do get essential oil into your eye, do not try to flush it out with water. This is going to drive it in further. What you want to do is you want to grab a carrier oil, like some coconut oil or or even olive oil, and just goober it on into your eye. It sounds a little bit strange, but this is really going to cut that burnout almost instantaneously. Okay, the third way we can use essential oils is internally. This is a really hot topic for some. It's really amazing to me the amount of fear that some people have surrounding using essential oils internally. We don't have time for this episode to get into all of the details right now. I do plan to have a very special guest on the show who is really going to break down the facts for us and look into all the studies So I'm not going to get into it and get lost in a tangent right now. I'll simply say that for those who don't feel like it's safe for their bodies to take oils internally, then just don't do it. And for those who feel like it's okay, that their bodies are okay with this, then here's just a, a few suggestions that I have for using them internally. I like to start my day out by making a quart of oily water. So I take my quart mason jar. You know, you always want to use glass when drinking essential oils, never plastic. And I add just a just like a teaspoon of honey into the water, not really for flavor so much as just um, so that you can help the oils bind to something and mix into the water so they just don't float on top. And then I'll add a few drops of my oil to the water. I love drinking lavender, lemon, and peppermint water. Oh my gosh, it's so delicious. It's like the magical combination of oils. It just makes you feel so good when you drink it. If you're new to oils, I'd say start with just one drop of each to help your body system get acclimated to the oils first. And then you can slowly work your way up to about three drops each or more. If you start using too much oil too fast, you will likely set off what's called a detox reaction, which could result in some discomfort for a few days, such as headache or nausea. So it's not a huge deal. I mean, detoxing can be pretty beneficial, but um, just be gentle with yourselves, okay? I don't want anyone rushing in. You can also add oils to empty gel capsules and swallow. If you do this, I recommend adding a few drops of carrier oil in with the capsule when you do this. 
You can also use the oils for cooking, which can be a lot of fun and super tasty. I love making peppermint brownies. So much fun. Um, We'll definitely be having some episodes on the show about cooking with the oils. But going back to oil quality for a second. So I've heard a lot of stories of folks getting really sick after ingesting a poor quality essential oil. So don't mess around with using your oils, especially internally, you want to make sure you have a really good quality oil out there. Those are the three ways you can use your essential oils, aromatically, topically, or internally. So now I just want to cover some really important safety information and make sure that everyone's being careful using their oils. So safety tip number one, be really careful when using any of the citrus essential oils on your skin. The citrus oils have photosynthetic properties to them, so they can cause really severe burning if exposed to direct sunlight. So for example, you wouldn't want to put you know, lemon oil on your face and then go sunbathing, right? You would definitely want to shade that portion of your skin. I'd say give it at least 12 hours before exposing your skin to the sun after applying a citrus oil. So the citrus oils out there are lemon, orange, tangerine, grapefruit, um, a couple more, and bergamot. So a lot of folks don't know that bergamot is a citrus oil. So be careful about that. For people that have cats and pets in general, um, we're going to have some really great episodes regarding using essential oils on pets. There's really some excellent ways to use these oils on your animals that they can really benefit from them so much. But there are a few things to be aware of. Um, You'll definitely want to do your research when using oils on pets, but especially for cats. So we'll have a special episode for sure about safety in cats. But um, just if you've if you've got your oils and you own a cat, just do a little bit of extra research um, because there's certain oils that cats don't assimilate very well into their body and they can get um, potentially pretty sick. The best resources I know out there for using oils on pets is the book Animal Desk Reference by Melissa Shelton, DVM. Um, I'll have a link for that for you in the show notes. If you want to go to revolutionoils.com slash podcast, you can find today's episode and there'll be a link on there for um, any of the resources that we mention in the show. If you are pregnant, you definitely want to do a little bit of extra research as well. Certain oils are contraindicated for pregnancy. I have a really great, easy-to-follow chart that um, tells you which oils are safe, which oils should be used more cautiously, and which oils to avoid in pregnancy. I'll post that up in the show notes as well. And of course, knowing my background as a childbirth educator and a doula, we're going to have tons of episodes on the show um, regarding essential oil use for pregnancy and birth and beyond. Using essential oils on children can be, of course, pretty controversial as with anything when you talk about children. There's lots of different opinions out there. You'll want to do your research on that as well. Uh, Personally, I do use essential oils on my children. There's certain ones such as wintergreen that I might avoid or use a lot less of. Again, do your research and just do what's best for you. If you're taking any sort of medication, a prescription, or even over-the-counter, you might want to just check with your doctor first to see if there's any um, contraindicated herbs out there. So if, if an herb or a food, for example, grapefruit, is contraindicated for certain medications, you definitely would want to avoid that essential oil as well. You might want to consult an aromatherapist. They might have a little bit more knowledge behind which oils can and can't be used with certain medications. Another thing to be aware of too is some of these essential oils can actually enhance the properties of certain medications. So if you're taking a medication and you start taking an essential oil that enhances that medication's effectiveness, you might want to talk to your doctor about lowering that medication so that you're not um, overdoing that result. I think it's really important that you have a willingness to play and experiment when using your essential oils. All of our bodies are so different. You know, what works for me might not work for you. And you really need to get to know what your body 
needs when using essential oils. We we get to kind of be our own chemist in a way when we start using and playing with these essential oils. And it, it can be really fun. And I don't want people to be scared. I don't want people to think, oh, this is too complicated or I'm, I'm afraid I'm not doing it safely. You know, I think if you know these basic facts, um, go with it from there and just experiment and use your oils. You know, I think that our body has this sort of intuitive sense of what it needs and which oil it needs. And you get to learn that as you start to play. But I know what you're all thinking, right? You're all thinking, okay, how do I know which oils to use for what? Well, this show is going to help a lot with that. We're going to have a lot of episodes about some targeted um, issues out there. Um, but this it does take time to learn a little bit about what the different properties are of the essential oils. There's tons of really great books out there and resources out there. I mean, even Google can, can really be enlightening if you are trying to figure out which oils you should start using. It's another reason that I really like um, the fact that Young Living is a direct sales company is because it hooks you up with that sponsor. It hooks you up with that person that gets you started with using oil so that they can walk you through the steps of how to get started and be just that extra resource for you when you're first starting to use these essential oils. If you're already a Young Living member and you feel like you just need a little extra support learning how to use your oils, I just encourage you to reach out to your sponsor, reach out to that person that got you started with Young Living so that they can give you a little extra support and hook you into whatever resources are available to them. For example, in the Revolution Oils team, anyone that joins our family, we automatically add them into our private Facebook groups. That's just for our members. It's where members can go ask any questions they have and get answers from people that are using their oils daily and are just like you and just learning and experimenting. So that's a really great resource to have. Check with your sponsor and see if they have anything like that. Anyone that signs up with me personally, I always send them some excellent free resource guides, free handouts. I really like to get my members started out on a good foot and supply them with these really empowering tools that are going to help them learn how to use their oils. We're always doing really fun, free webinars on different products that Young Living has to offer and how you can incorporate them into your health routine. So if you're not already a member, I just encourage you to go back to whoever it was that invited you to listen to this show. Obviously, they care about you by sharing this show with you. So check with them first and see, you know, are they an active Young Living sponsor? Are they really helping their members get started? And then talk to them and say, hey, I'm ready to get started with Young Living. If you don't know anyone that's active in Young Living, then you're welcome to join our Revolution Oils family. We're always welcoming people into our little group and supporting them to get started. We have so much fun. And you can go to revolutionoils.com just to learn a little more about us and what we're all about and the best way to get started. I always recommend people to get started using the Young Living Premium Starter Kit. So they call it the Starter Kit for a reason. It really is the best way to get started if you're brand new to essential oils. It's a fantastic deal. It comes with a diffuser. It comes with 11 essential oils. And I call these 11 essential oils like your basic arsenal. So if you're not sure which oils to start out with and which ones to buy, just start with the Starter Kit because that's going to cover almost all of your bases for anything that you would need to use essential oils for. We have a free mini course on our website that anyone can sign up for and gives a great walkthrough of the starter kit oils and how to use each oil and incorporate them into your life. So you can get that free mini course and it goes just directly to your email and it's just an email a day for about 12 days. So you can just go to revolutionoils.com slash podcast, and there'll be a link there for a free mini course on how to get started with essential oils. So there's tons of resources out there for you. It's really easy to do and get started. And I hope you do because these oils, they are amazing. They will really change your life. Well, revolutionaries, thank you again for joining me here today on the essential oil revolution. Remember that your health and happiness depends on you and you alone. And you have been treating yourself well today by learning something new and empowering. 
Head on over to revolutionoils.com slash podcast, where you can look at the show notes from today's episode, as well as past episodes. You'll find useful links, useful notes, as well as some free resources for beginners out there. And if you're listening in real time, remember that we've got some really fun giveaways going on over on the website. So revolutionoils.com slash podcast. We're giving away free essential oils to our listeners. If you're listening um, during the launch, we'll be having a celebration going on for the first eight weeks of the show. So head on over. You can find the show notes and the details of the giveaways there. Peace out, revolutionaries. Keep on learning, keep on discovering, and most importantly, keep on treating yourself well. You are worth it.